Let me tell you. <laughs> but you got to do it if you're going to play. you got to play good stuff right. How about I love the Lord today? Amen. we got a thing here today. <laughs> the Lord today. we got a thing here, huh? Amen. down in heaven today. All right. Little Spanky was in Sunday school today. All right. <laughs> I don't came down until the other day. He said, that woman, that woman, that woman there, she let him sleep in. But uh, she kicked him out smart, didn't you, huh? You're going to give him that excuse today. We're glad you're here today, guys. Good to see you. Well, speak to the honey. <laughs> she had well, a time yesterday. She had a time yesterday, didn't she? Yeah. She, yeah. Had yeah. she, had dancing she, a, she did more dancing than anybody in the place. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a good time. And I was glad to see my buddy Hugh Brown there, and I hadn't seen you in a long time. And, and when I was a kid, he was kind of a, a star around these parts. He was Hank Starr. I remind him of the time he just smiles. <laughs> Hank Starr, just in from uh, was it Kansas City? He yeah, had that in the paper. Now appearing at the North Side Inn, you know. <laughs> Hank Starr, just in from Kansas City, you know. He's a wonderful old guy. Yes, he got yes. to, out of the uh, senior citizen. Senior citizen every Tuesday night. Don't get around to it too good anymore. But when I was a kid, I used to go to Brown County just to hear him sing. And he's a fine singer. We got, and he's got a, he's got a CD out that's really, really good. Some of them old songs I really enjoy listening to. But we, he and I got to talk a lot about. That. Lisa getting ready to do another one for him too. Yeah. Just uh, uh, like mill, uh, butter beans, oh, yeah, and butter beans. I, it's got, you know, old old songs old on family. it. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Me and Daisy had some butter beans the other day. Mm. Brother Ray, uh, I love butter beans. <laughs> Ray Clark had us up for dinner the other day. They, and I mean, they had them potatoes and onions and butter beans. <clears throat> Cornbread. <laughs> <coughs> and I got a fill of butter beans. But uh, anyway, it's good to serve the Lord. And can we just raise our hands? Can you surrender this morning to the Lord? Oh, That's God. what this means. Lord, I give up. You got me. Jesus. Thank you got you me, Lord. Lord. I give up. Yes, Lord Jesus. Here we are, Lord. Way, Lord. Bless us today, O oh God. Touch Jesus. our hearts. Lord, glory to God. Just Lord, teach us thy ways and truths. Open your word unto us, O oh God, that we might hear and understand the word of God. Let it speak to our hearts. We we'll thank you for it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. 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 Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who can quote the word and don't even understand one thing about what they're quoting. Yeah. There's a lot of guys out of 7 come 11, little Joe and Coco Mova. <laughs> and they quote you the word backwards and forwards and go out and kill one another and beat each other up and everything else. But this word is to live by. We're supposed to take it into our heart. It's supposed to change our life. That's right. And that's what this is about, this message here today. I, I thought of Rodney, this is one of his very favorite verse of scripture. I, I preached this before. He he preached a real good message on the one time here. And but but I, I came about it in kind of a different way. The Lord began to talk to me concerning the mystery. He speaks in the word about the mystery. The mystery that, that exists. There's a mystery there. And this is part of the ministry, the the uh, mystery. I, I love to work in the garden. I don't I don't get to too much anymore, but I used to always have a garden. And Daisy and I put out a big garden one time out on Bobby Hummel's farm. We had camel for the eye could see. <laughs> I mean, we went a little overboard. We didn't want to worry too much about the watermelons. We had watermelons out there, but the rabbits took care of that. And it just looked so good later. And when you went on the back side, the whole side was eaten out. And there wasn't nothing in there. The shells sitting there. We were picking watermelons up, and all there was shells. <laughs> but it was a great experience. And I, that, that's where I got that sweet potato. It was about, about that big and about that big around. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. The biggest sweet potato I've ever seen in my life. I took it to work and showed it to all the guys. But uh, I learned so much in a, in, a, in a garden. There's so much to learn in a garden. And it's a great mystery about the garden. You, 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 take, you can take a grain of corn and you put it in the ground. And you put it in there and you bury it in there. And, this, and the rains on it, 
and the sun shines. And I always love to go out. And I go out every day. When I worked at Ford, I, I lived at home around 3. First thing I do, get out of my car. I got off, got off at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I get home, I get out and I run out the garden. Look at it. See if I had anything yet. <clears throat> and it seemed like it took forever for that seed to come. But after a while, there'd be a crack going down the, right down the road. There'd be a crack there. Next thing you know, there's a little blade come up. Ah, there he is. There's that corn, you know. Two or three years or four, maybe be on that, on that the stalk. And then when that thing come up in them ears of corn, and now you got a whole ear full of seeds. Come out one little seed. Think about that. That's all part of the mystery. See? And Jesus proved out that mystery when He was planted into the ground. When He had to go into the ground. See? And look what's come forth. All right. Churches all over the world. People filled with His Spirit all over the world because one man died. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. We, we try to look into it, but there's, there's a great mystery here if you can come to understand it. And the mystery, part of the mystery is this. Your life really doesn't mean all that much. We're just passing through here. The old song says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. If, you, if you're not starting to feel like an alien in this world, then you just ain't quite reached where you need to be at yet. But I look around and I see what people in this world are doing. I say, oh my. my God, I never dreamed I'd ever see things like this. Uh -uh. This ain't me. <laughs> you ever hear, hear me say, this ain't the way I was brought up. Or somebody tell you that ain't the way yep. you was brought up. Yep. And it's a different world that we came up in. Amen. Our children are facing a different world that we came up in, folks. Yes. Yep. It's not what it once was. But uh, the, all, all part of this mystery, and Jesus begins to tell it, and he talks about in the fact that, that we're going to, you know, things are going to be revealed here. There's a mystery going to be revealed. He said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Well, it really looked like he got humiliated. That's part of the mystery. He laid his life down. One time he told Pilate, he said, you don't have any power over me except it's given you from above. In other words, it was the plan from the beginning. He said, you, you're not taking my line. I'm laying it down. And if I lay it down, I got power to take it back up again. Yeah. Folks, today you could quit and say, I give up. I'm not going to church. I'm not going to try it anymore. You could lay, it, lay your life down. But you have power within you if you're a child of God. You can take it back up. Some have laid it down and they haven't picked it back up. You, you, don't, have, you don't have to pick it back up. Somehow it's going to hell. Oh we don't talk a lot about it around here because we ain't got no intention to go in there. No. <laughs> uh, that's something for the world to worry about. We don't worry about that. Because now there's yeah. one, there was a time in our life we were going straight to hell. Mm -hmm. There was no doubt about where we was going. And we admitted it to about asking. And then you tell people, say, if you keep going to where you're going, you're going straight to hell. They say, but I have an out of company. Well, I'll tell you what, they won't do you any good. No, they won't help you any. You talk about alone, you're going to be alone as alone can be. And I often think about sometimes that going into, going into hell would be like falling off a cliff in the darkness and never landing. No, you're going to land. Never have the Lord anymore. But never landed. Wouldn't it be an awful, awful thing to have to face throughout eternity forever and ever? My God, what torment that would be. The Bible said to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yes. Oh, it's not going to be a happy place. Absolutely not. Your friends won't be able to help you in hell. Nope. Nope. And you better think about that. Well, I have plenty of company. Yeah, you will. You'll all be screaming bloody murder. Uh-huh. There'll That's be no the reality peace. of it. No peace. No, no peace. No. Not for no just Lord. a few days or a few hours, but forever, but forever and ever through the ages of time. Hmm. Well, there'll be no time. Can you imagine just hearing people There'll scream. be no time. Oh, time will be no longer. The angels step out on the land and say, to declare time is no longer. Yeah. It'll just be forever. Yeah. Then we really see God and we'll understand God because 
God always was and He always will be. Time don't mean a thing to God. No. He always was and He always will be. And you, that's hard to understand. You don't need you trying to fathom that because that's way beyond us. Because we're thinking in terms of, I'm 70 years old. Good Lord. I mean, Nathan was talking one day, and I was talking about old, old folks. I said, one of these days we'll get old. <laughs> now, this has been a few years ago. I've come to terms with it now. <laughs> I have arrived. <laughs> but at that time, I wasn't feeling all, all as old as I do now. And I said, so many days we'll get old and... I said, wait a minute. <laughs> well, you're old. I mean, you're 70, you're old, right? Good Lord, everybody. I didn't feel 70. <laughs> and I, I don't know where it went. Seemed like, yes, I had my duck tails and my guitar and hopping around while I sang an Elvis Presley song when I was 16 years old. Where'd it go? It just went. The Bible said your life is just a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. That's the way it is. I've done funerals. Sometimes for people, maybe just a handful of people, maybe maybe six or eight, ten people there or less. And I, and I, and I got to get up here and talk about this life here that made such an impact on many lives through the years, no doubt. Now where are they all at? Now, now how do I... How do I encapsulate this life in just a matter of a few words here? Well, you just don't do it. You do, you do the best you can. You can't do it justice. But I think about this as a life here. And there's been happy times. And there's been joyous times. Times of celebration. There's been times of tears and sorrow and heartache and disappointment. Oh, that's part of that life. But now it's like a tree falling in a forest. Does anybody hear it fall? Oh, you walk by and there it's laying there. You pick mushrooms around it. But it was standing one time, standing tall and strong, but one day it fell. And it just fell, and it was over. What is your life? It's a vapor that appeared for a little while and vanisheth away. But folks, we're going to a place that's not going to vanish away. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. Right, it's going to be a good place. Yeah. Don't you worry about it. It's going to be way above anything we've ever experienced here. Mm. It's going to be worth the trip. It's going to be worth every heartache and every sorrow and every disappointment and every uh, pain that we've had to suffer in this life. It's going to be beyond that. I believe, we, I believe when we step inside the gates, it'll all be a, a thing of the past. It won't even be in our memory. Thank you, Jesus. And we just spend about a couple thousand years just looking at it. Say, my God, what have I got myself in? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the kids worry about it'll be dull in heaven. Oh, no, it won't be dull in no. heaven. We'll get bored. Eh? You will not be bored in heaven. But see, we can't imagine all that. We, we, we think in terms of this life. That's where our thoughts go to. But he said here, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground. What he said, it must. This is what must happen. Jesus told them over and over, he said, this is what I've got to do. And then when it happened, they, they didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to believe it. They, they thought he was going to come in, kick out the Romans, turn over the, the church, take control. They even went to it and said, uh, James and John and said, how about when you come into your power, let me sit on the right hand and, and James on the left hand when you, when you sit on your throne. He said, you don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's what they imagined it to be. And then can you imagine their consternation when they took him away and they whipped him and they beat him and they scourged him and they laughed at him, made fun of him, spit in his face, put him up on a cross. Mm -hmm. I mean, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. And when it come down to the final thing, there was just Mary and, and John and a few of the disciples, Nicodemus, who were following along behind. And all them other guys, they, they fled. They just drunk. They got out of there. So he was more or less alone, just a very few people that was there. And he told them all. And they're trying to figure out, what in the world is this? What is this? And he had told them, but they had an idea in their mind saying they thought this was what it was going to be and it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. 
Not yet, anyhow. I got news for you. He's going to sit on that throne. You're going to see Him on that throne. And the Bible said every eye is going to behold Him that sits on the throne. His time is going to be there. And right now, He's on the throne of our hearts. He's already taken up His kingship in our hearts. He's the ruler of this temple right here. Yes. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm glad about it. But he said it must be this way and it must die. And, and, and when it dies, it's going to be alone. It's going to be all alone. Jesus alone did this. Nobody else gets any credit for it. He did it all. He paid the price. Already paid for. Everything paid for. Sometimes we pray and say, oh God, do this and do that. It's already done. All you got to do is believe it and receive it. If you, can receive, if you can receive it, it's already paid for. Your healing's already paid for. The, the proper thing says, God, just honor your word. Just honor your word. You said it, I accept it, now just honor your word. And he knows how to do that. Yes, he does. Amen. But if it dies, it's going to die. But let me tell you, when it dies, something else is going to happen. Some other things are going to begin to work here. You know, I found this out to be true, children. When you indict doing something, you, when you get a good thing and you say, I ought to do this, I ought to quit doing this, I ought to quit doing that, or, and but I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you imagine how this is going to torment me, it's going to drive me crazy, my tongue's going to be hanging out, and I'm going to lose every bit of power of God, and I just can't do this. But when you finally surrender and say, Lord, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to yes. do. Go where you want I'm going to try, Lord. You know why? All of a sudden, He takes it over. Yes. I mean, I, I fought it against an addiction for years and years. You've heard me preach and talk, talk about it. And we've all had our addictions. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got to speak before the men's prayer breakfast uh, uh, Saturday morning. And, and, of course, a lot of those guys, well, they got problems. You know, they got addictions. And, they, and they're, they're at a point in life where they're just <clears throat> against the wall and they can't seem to go any farther. Mm. And I, they're just people just like you and me. But they can't see their self victorious. Yes. So they keep coming back to the same thing. Keep falling back into the same hole. I, I, when I spoke to them, I used the, the analogy that Daisy preached to us many years ago. It's been repeated many times in this church about that hole in the sidewalk. I don't know how many times I've repeated it, but it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thought because it's true. There's a hole in that sidewalk. I hid down that street. I believe it said a Christian life in five chapters is what it said. You go down the go down that street and there's that hole. Guess what? I fell in that hole. I can't believe I fell in this hole. It took me forever to get out. I like to never got out. I mean, it took me forever to get out of that hole. I didn't think I was ever going to get out of that hole. And finally, I managed to crawl up out of that hole. Chapter two. I went down the street and there's that hole. Now I know it's there. I fall in it. But I fall in it. It wasn't quite as hard getting out this time because I'd struggled so hard the first time. I kind of uh, took a little shortcut, didn't do all the things I did before, and I got out. Chapter 3, I went down the street. I cannot believe it. There's that hole. And I thought, sure, I could resist it. That's but I ended again. up in that hole again. Got How did I do this? I got must be an idiot. Chapter 4, I went down the street and there's that hole. I went around that hole. I wasn't going to fall in that hole again. I went around that hole. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5, I went down another street. Mm -hmm. I ain't taking no chances now on falling in that hole. I know what my problems are and I know I, can, I, just, can't, I just can't do it. If you're a drinker, you have no business being worth a drinker. That's right. You do, you're going to drink. You're going to fall in that hole. And I'm t telling you this, that every one of us has a hole. It may not be drinking. It may not be uh, any other thing. It may be something way beyond me, but nevertheless, it's your hole. You are assigned almost a hole. Everybody's got a hole. And if you ain't careful, you'll find yourself in it. And your job as a Christian is trying to figure out how to get away from that hole. Mm -hmm. And you got to find you another street to go down. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I told his brothers that Saturday. 
I said, uh, you have to change your associations. Absolutely. The guys you hang around with, there's one thing about it, you're going to pull them in or they're going to pull you out. That's it. You're going to influence them or they're going to influence you. Now that's the way it is. I've told him many times about this friend of mine that I grew up with in the North End. And he and I were just close as any brother I got. We used to sing together. We used to chase girls together. We was, we was buddies. We was pals. We was together all the time. And I, shortly after I got saved, he came to the church. And a lot of his people was in the church. And he came to an altar. And, he, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. I mean, he was very spiritual. But he never could get settled in the church. He couldn't deny himself. Right guys come around, he'd be drawn away. It happened over and over and over. I, and I, oh God, I wanted the best for him. Of course, I, I hung right with him and I pulled on him and I drug him, drug him part of the way. You can't drag nobody. No. They don't want to go, they ain't going to go. Right. And they might even pretend to you that they're doing just to make you happy. <laughs> And the, the day come that I've, and I, I never will forget we was in a revival. We had a revival going, boy. And we had it back in those days. I mean, we went into 7 or after 7, 11 o'clock, we're still there. I mean, we had the ball rolling. And this went on night after night after night. Sometimes four-week revivals was not unusual at all. Two minimum. If we went in a revival, we we're going to go two weeks. Count on that. We didn't have video games and all the things that people got for, for them to fool around with now. We, this was our hobby. It was our entertainment. And our whole life was wrapped up in it. Well, he hadn't been out to revival. Two or three nights, he hadn't showed up. So I went by to check him out before church. Walked in, and there they had the Miller's High Life all around. They had the cards deal out on the table. And his old buddies in there, and his all okay. huffing and the puffing and the playing in the yards and drinking. I said, man, you ain't been to revival. You need to get to church. Yeah, I need to get to church. I need to get to church. Wasn't too long after that, he got to church. And I've, I've told you this in this church before. you never seen nothing like it. He crawled to his hands and knees to the altar. Right. Crawled on his hands and knees and wet the floor with his tears. He could bawl like a baby. He could, he could make you believe. I mean... And how much was sincere, God only knows. There's a lot of, a lot of good actors in the world. But I always wanted to believe it was he had it on his heart. But some way he was not able to be what he wanted to be. Huh. And I couldn't make it. But I'll tell you one thing. If I'd have kept trying to pull on him, next thing you know, he'd be pulling on me. He'd pull you down. I had to break my association. I had to get away from it. Yeah. To save myself. I love the kid. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go home without him. I knew I'd found the best thing this side of heaven. I didn't want to leave it. No. But he wasn't in love with Jesus like I was. Right. And so I had to break that association. I had to break a lot of associations. <coughs> As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I can't yes. help what others do. Yes. I must go on. Amen. I mean, that's been a long time ago. It's been 50 years ago. I mean, I'm telling you, that's just the way that it was. Time he was 38 years old, he was dead. I'm just getting ready to ask you if he was still alive. No, nope, he was dead. Big, tall, good looking guy, you wouldn't think there's a thing wrong Sad. with him. But see, he misused his body, abused his body. Sad. He did everything he else but what Same he wanted to do. Pat, and he went, died at and 38. One day he just dropped over dead. So young. Oh, it broke my heart, killed me. And uh, I don't know, don't know if he was his condition. I mean, I hadn't been around him uh, for a couple of years. He might have got everything right with God. I pray he did. I hope he yeah. did. But I don't know that he did. Yeah. He never showed no signs of it to me. But you see, all of us have got that hole. There's a hole there. You know what your hole is. I don't. You do. If you don't, you will. But there's something that's... See, it, and the devil knows what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to put it right in front of you and you're going to be there all the time. Trying to drag you out. Get you away from God. Mm -hmm. See? But it, it's all part of the growing process. As we grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord, we come to learn about Him. See, Jesus said, Come unto me and learn of me. Yeah. Now, you know, churches will try to indoctrinate you, or people try to indoctrinate you with, with what they believe. And a certain amount of that's all right. 
But you've got to get in this Bible and find it for yourself. Yes. I found out I was in error in a lot of things, and I found out a lot of things that people taught me was absolutely balderdash. They meant well. <laughs> but I found out it wasn't what it was cracked up to be. Because uh, Jesus said, disregarding the commandments of God, you do follow the traditions of men. Uh -huh. So a lot of people follow the traditions of men rather than... The, and, and, and if you stay with God and you follow on to know the Lord and you study the Word and you offer yourself, I guarantee you He will lead you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. The Bible says so. And He'll show you what's right and what's wrong. It'll all be proven out to you if you'll offer yourself. Amen. He'll guide you into all truth. So it's expedient with that we must die. I remember telling this one time about a preacher said, You got to die. You got to die. He's preaching. Said, you got to die. The poor woman said, I don't want to die. You know? <laughs> she thought he meant naturally. He talked about spiritually, you got to die. But he didn't explain himself too well. She said, I don't want to die. I want to be saved. I don't want to die. Well, I got news that the, the natural man, he don't want to die either. Spiritually, I'm talking about it. He don't want to die either. But you almost have to kill him off. You, you know what I mean? You, you do. <laughs> but but there's there's something else comes out of this, see? Well, if it die, if it die, if you die, if you give your life over to God, Lord, here I am. Take my life. Yes. I offer my life to you. Make me what I ought to be. You know what? Yes. He'll do that very thing. Yes. He will absolutely do that very thing. Uh, it goes on down here, as we'll read later on, that, you know, if you uh, seek to live, now it's talking about after the natural, after the worldly thinking, you'll die. How will you die? You'll die spiritually. But if you're willing to die out to self, that he might live, you gain eternal life. Uh-huh. Now, it's something you can't know but by one way, by being planted and being buried yep. and by surrendering, <coughs> by dying to your will. Dying to your will. And to realize that there's a hole for you and you've got to avoid that hole at all costs. Mm -hmm. There's no need going down that same street and walking around that hole because sooner or later you're going to end up back in the hole. That makes sense. <laughs> it's just the way it is. If you have a weakness and you go anywhere where it's going to feed that weakness, before you know it, it'll break down your will and you'll be in it. I'll win them over. No, chances are they'll win you over. You have to avoid that. Now, listen, I played music in the clubs all over the United States and never drunk a drop. I never drunk a drop in any place I ever played. You know why? I don't care nothing about it. I never was a drinker. And that might be your problem. That's your problem. It's a hole. You'll find yourself in it. They used to come late and say, let me buy you a drink. And I said, just put the money down right there. I'll get it later. I'll get it later and stick it in my pocket. You know? Then I'd stop at the filling station and give you a nice big Coke on the way home. But I ain't caring about drinking. I love the boogie boogie. You bought a drink anyway. And I love Rocky Top. You know, I love, I love that stuff. Still do, for that goes. <laughs> but but all that other stuff goes with it now. I can even sing Mountain Dew and never think a thing about a Mountain Dew. Be like, how can you? Well, I call it that good old Mountain Dew, do, 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 and then that refuse it on you. I'll hush up my mug when you fill up my jug. That good old mountain do. Just down the road from me, there's a big holler tree where you lay down a dollar or two. You go round the bend when you come back again, there's a jug of that good old mountain do. <laughs> I like that song, I like to pick it. It's got a nice tune to it. But I don't think a thing about that mountain do. I could give you a dime roll of mountain do, you can stack up. But see, I don't like that's it. the way it is. I never tasted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want no part of it. That's, well, yeah, I, I, that's me. I, 
I don't care anything about that. But but if, but if you do, then that that's that's your hole. That's what you need to stay away from. There's a hole that you got to avoid. So to die out spiritually is the most important thing. Yes, amen. But if it dies, it said the except the corner weed fall on the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. There's a dying process in this thing. And you don't die overnight. No. Some people struggle for years with different things. But and just because somebody else does it, you can't say, well, they do it. Well, maybe that's not their hope. Understand me? Now Paul said a little wine for the stomach's sake. What he said? There ain't nothing wrong with a little drink of wine. But a wine old can't drink wine. No. <laughs> if he does, he's gonna get him a jug and another jug and another jug. Right? Mm -hmm. So just cause somebody else does it. I went to our house and they had wine for dinner. Well, guess what? That ain't too bad. <coughs> I get in trouble every time I Preach his message, but it's true. Uh -oh. <laughs> Pat said it's all right to drink wine. No, I didn't. <laughs> but I can, I I can drink I wine and not me a bit. But uh, really, I just really have iced tea. Uh, but I've never been a drinking person, so it's not a problem for me. But for some people, it's a big hole in the street. And they go down that street, they're going to fall in that hole. And so they got to go down another street. That's the point I'm telling you. Yeah. And every one of you has got holes in your in the street somewhere. <clears throat> and you got to learn to go down another street. Yeah. You may have to change your associations, change your friends, find you a new block of friends, find you another way to go. Because if you go that way, you're going to be lost. And you're going to be struggling and fighting all the days of your life with something that you really don't have the power to master. Only God can take care of those things. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I do thank the Lord that I never had that problem with it, but I had my problems and still do as, as, as a human being. I still have my weaknesses. But nevertheless, that's not one of them. Thank you, Jesus. They should never have to worry about where I was at, drunk somewhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've been on buses with, with some big entertainers. Waylon Jennings one time up in Michigan. You ever meet Waylon? I said, no, come on, well, let's you meet Waylon. There they had the scotch all around. Here you drink. I said, no, thanks, I, I'll pass. Get me a cup of coffee. I just don't drink. <laughs> and that happened many, many times. Different things like that. And I know there was other things too, And I, but I made up my mind when I, when I went down that road that I wasn't going to take of anything like that. I just made up my mind. Of course, it was easy for me because I didn't drink. I didn't have a problem. But if I had that problem, I shouldn't even put myself in that kind of a position. Oh, you right. understand what I'm yeah. saying to you? Right. But if you're not careful, you look for well, he does it. There's a yeah, but maybe he can do it, but you can't. That's right. That's saying you just leave that alone. That's right. Absolutely. Daisy's dad used to keep a few beers in the refrigerator. That's before he got saved. That's before he got saved. It was. But I never did see nothing wrong with that. He had him a cold beer once. Well, didn't bother me now. He can drink a beer before he went to bed. But everybody can't do that. You may not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I had I a, couldn't. I had a brother could sit and drink it all day long. Mm -hmm. Seen him do it many a time. So there, there is kind of alcohol problem in the roots of my family. Yeah. My mother could swill that beer, but she can drink it. <laughs> Thank God I never, I wasn't stuck with that. She'd tell you, I was, I was born in a family of beer drinkers and <laughs> bootleggers, bootleggers, and thieves, <coughs> bootleggers and thieves. That's what she said. Why in the world, Lord, ever saved me? I was raised in a household of bootleggers and thieves. Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. She was. I can remember as a young child, uh, <laughs> her dad would come down to Martinsville with old Chip Warden. Chip's got a. He's famous in these parts. He's got a he's got a fame that goes way out beyond, you know. He worked at Stark and Wetzel, and he used to he come over there one night 
with a staggering Wetzel truck and how he got loud that he must have paid off the guards or something, had a whole load of meat in that in that little step van, and he was selling meat out of the back of that van to all the neighbors. They just come around getting that bacon for back and nothing, you know? Hams and bacon. But that was his life. That was, and I was raised up beholding that, seeing that. And one time, I remember they come up north end and they, and they were selling a bunch of stuff out of the trunk of his car. in the statues, all kinds of knickknacks and doodads. And I know they stole them. I ain't no doubt in my mind. They wouldn't buy this stuff. They were stolen just sure as the world. And that's the way they did. And that's what my mother was raised up in. Never, never no acknowledgement of God, no church. And she used to say, why in the world did the Lord, some way or other, he saw something in her and he, he got her out of that. And, and uh, back in her early years, she was... She was rough. She was crude. Now let me tell you, but through the years, the Lord's worked with her, worked with her, and uh, He helped her a lot. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, He did. But see that—that that was her problem, and she had to stay completely away from that kind of stuff. And that's just the way it is. And and we've all got our weaknesses. And the Bible said, "Let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling." You don't have to answer for me. I don't have to answer for you. But every one of us is going to answer. We're all going to give an answer. And you can't look up and say, well, he got, he got by with it. Let me tell you what Jesus said about that one time. Peter said, you put all this on to me. Peter, he said, there'll be a man come and take you and lead you places you don't want to go. I mean, he would probably sign a hard step to him. I just want you to know. Now, Now this is after he said, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, Peter was feeling pretty good about that time. Well, I'm, I'm really ill in the, in the inside deal. But then when they got down to where the rubber meets the road, he said, well, they're going to take you, and they're going to do this to you, and they're going to do that to you. And Peter said, wait a minute, I didn't bargain for this deal. <laughs> And he said, uh, well, he said, what about, what about John over here? He said, if I will that he tarry till, till I, I come, come, what is that, that to me? <laughs> it's none of your business about John. I'll take care of John. You take care of Peter. <laughs> you do what I told you to do. So see, we, we have a tendency to look around and say, why, they don't do nothing. And they, we do all the work. You know, Martha, Mary did that, or Martha did that. Yeah. Poor old Mary, she just sits around rubbing Jesus' feet with expensive oils and stuff. Mm -hmm. And me, I got to do the dishes. <laughs> we used to have a lady up in, our, in the town just put off a she <laughs> yeah. I can remember this as a, as a young kid, just a little kid. Everybody sits around in church while poor old Jesse works. She, <laughs> she sings. <laughs> Nobody got as bad as me. You you can get her to try to go to church though. I mean she's gonna she gonna find all there they go. They're going off to church. Give their money. Poor old Jesse. Poor old Jesse. No, she just works. Night and day she just works. <coughs> Has put up with old Charlie coming in and kicking her around. So you know. You know, you, you've all heard those things like that in your life. Uh, <laughs> but as a kid, I can remember that just like yesterday. And you can sit and be envious, and you can say, well, I don't know why they got so much, and I ain't got no one. Every year they get a new car, and I've been driving this whole piece of nothing for years and years. I've told about my little compensation wagon I had, and it, I, I had it for years, I mean, the floorboard was rotted out. There's big holes in the floorboard. Now, I remember one time I went and picked a preacher up that was going to come and hold survival. And, and I was taking him taking him home and went through a big mud puddle and just sprayed water all over my pile of floor. I said, don't charge for that. That's all, that's all part of the deal there. You get a bath. Every time you get in my car, you get a bath. Not every time, but at that time you did. <laughs> All these other guys driving new cars, and I got that old junkie coming with water coming up through the floorboard. So I, uh, I know in which I speak, and I, I sit and watch people prosper. It seemed like I just struggled. It seemed like my nose was a grindstone all the time. But I was blessed in lots of other ways. 
See, God, God can bless you. Had a house full of kids. Never, never had one of them in the hospital. Went for years and years. Never. I mean, I was getting up in years before I ever went to the hospital for anything. You're 64 years went to I mean, God blessed me and blessed me and blessed me. My kids yeah. would get sick and I'd call them to me and I'd lay hands on them and I'd say, and I'd pray for them and a red hot fever. And you know, and I'd pray for them and that fever would go down and they'd say, I'll be all right now, Daddy. They'd go on out and play. And for years, that went that way. And God made the tires go longer. Made the, made that old car should have put it away a long time ago and jumped it out and I'm still driving. Still a home people church. One time I had two cars home people church. Had a stack full of people holding the church for several years. So I was blessed in lots of ways. Amen. And, and I got a feeling I had pretty much what I needed. Like we've talked about that cross room, you know. We brought that out many times through the years. Now this guy come in and he said, Lord, this cross you give me is just too, too heavy. Now I need a, a little lighter cross. He said, well, go in the cross room there and pick you out a cross. Find, find you a cross that will fit you real good. So he went in and banged around a while and kicked around. I guess he tried every cross on in the place. After a while, he came out and he said, Lord, I believe this is the one. I believe this is a, this is the cross I need. He said, well, that's good because that's the one you brought in. <laughs> I got a feeling the cross we got is the cross we need. <laughs> we may not think so. We may not like it. But I got a feeling it's the cross we need, Brother Adam. Whatever cross we're carrying, that's the cross we need. <coughs> See, the Lord knows what's going to take for you. Absolutely. And He knows what it's going to take for me, right? <clears throat> Jesus said, Come unto me and learn of me. So I'm interested in learning about Jesus. I'm not interested in learning about, you know, doctrines and, and things of men or what men think about things. I'm wanting to know about Him. That's the central figure of this whole Bible. I'm a Jesus man. I'm a Jesus man. Whatever suits him suits me. Amen. Yeah. And he was before all things, and by him all things consist. And all things were made by him and for him, or without him nothing was made that was made. All right. I'm a Jesus yeah. man. You want anybody to want to know? Well, I am. I'm a Jesus man. You hear it so? I'm a Jesus man. I'm a Jesus man. Anybody want to know what I am? I'm a Jesus man. Amen. And he said, take up your cross. He didn't say take up my cross. He already done that. Take up your cross. What is that cross? Well, might be that hole you're struggling with. There's a hole you're trying to keep falling into. It might be that hole. It might be that addiction you're fighting against, some of you. It might be your, your unbelief. It might be jealousy. It might be envy. It might be strife. We've all got our individual battles. But I guarantee you we're left with something. And that is our cross. Amen. We heard a man preach <laughs> to us not all, all that long ago. Shut up and march. Yeah. That was good. Shut up and march. Children, this is always whining about this. Well, we ain't got no meat. <coughs> meat, meat, we want meat. <laughs> he gave them manna from heaven, and he didn't even have to do anything, just go out and get it every day. Right. And they say it was just tasting like honey, it was just sweet, it was just the perfect food, apparently. It was just exactly what they needed. And, and in fact, if they tried to store it up, it would rot and, and worms uh -huh. get in it. So they just went out every day and get their new man. Just picked it up. It was just perfect, wasn't it? God just fixed that just exactly the way it should have been. But they want me. Me, give me me. You know, <laughs> the Lord, you know, he gave an absolute angel food from heaven. He said, I don't understand it. I give them this stuff here and they want me. Uh, you want me? I'll give you me. And the Bible said that there's quail, quail stacked high as the eye can see it. It's stank. Lay there and stunk it in my mouth. There it is, boys. There's your meat. <laughs> Enjoy it. You ever hear that? That's where that saying came from. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. might get it. Right. 
And it may not be what you need or want. And so it goes. Is that right? And you may look at your life and say, this is not meat. I want meat. And it may be manna, really. It may be, you may not realize it. You know, uh, a lot of times you don't realize what you got until it's gone. Or you can always look back and say, you know, I really had it pretty good. And I complain and I complain and I complain. And I really had it pretty good. I think we've all done that at one time or other in our life. And when we begin to realize, we start to value the things that really matter. Things of this world don't matter all that much, folks. No. What kind of car you drive or what kind of house you live in really doesn't matter all that much. No. A car, all you can do is drive it. I don't care how pretty it is, how much it costs you or anything else. All you can't eat it. The only thing you can do with it is drive it. That's right. And a house is good for one thing, living in. That's all. Yeah. It don't matter if it's a log cabin or if it's a mansion. And if it's a very nice place, a very big, you're going to have to mow a lot of grass and you're going to have to do a lot of painting to keep it up. Like really God give you some nice little something that's just fine. I remember when Daisy and I bought a house, and at the time we bought that house, we didn't have the money to buy a house. We lived in an apartment, but we wanted a house. And we knew that at least, at least I need a yard to play in and, and a house, you know. And so we, and we wouldn't look just for the house. There was snow on the ground that deep, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. And it was snowing so hard you couldn't even see. When I got over to that house, I walked around the house, and there's a cute little house. I walked all around the house. I said, Daisy, this is just what we need. This, it won't be too much. We can't take care of it. And it'll be just enough uh, yes, room for us. And this will be the bears. It's a nice little neighborhood. And I knew this in a nice neighborhood. When we brought the first load of furniture over, and when we left and we come back, my next door neighbor had his tractor out there plowing off uh, the, the drive and stuff, trying to make it easier for us to get in and out. Yep. I said, Daisy, we're in a good neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it was. It was just a wonderful, it was just and a blessing Mars, all the way around. And that little house turned out to be one of the greatest blessings of my life. I can't tell you how that house benefited us. But if it had been up to me, I'd have had a big pretty place up on the hill, you know, that I couldn't pay for. I'd probably end up losing. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knew what I needed. And He gave me just what I needed. And it just worked out perfect for us. And that's what God will do. When Sister Valerie, uh, started come through to our part of her house, I said, Valerie, you're going to end up with a nicer house than you had. You watch and see what I'm telling you. God's getting ready to bless you. And He did, didn't He? that nice. See, God's good. Yes, he he'll, he'll take you something and make a blessing out of it. He'll take something tragic, come along and make a blessing out of it. Mm -hmm. And the time that why did God let this happen to me? So he can give you something better. <laughs> that's, that's all part of the dying process too, see. we got to die out to self. we got to die out to our desires. We have to somewhere, and I'm going to tell you this is the key to serving God, folks. It's the key to serving God. You've got to die out to your, your desires. Amen. You have to put the cause of... We're, we're serving something that's way bigger than we are. It's a cause that's way bigger than our little desires. This is a, this is a, a thing that will benefit mankind. And what God's got waiting on, it's going to be worth it, brother. It's going to be worth every trial. It's going to be worth putting your time into. It's going to be worth you getting in and supporting it. It's going to be worth it all. And the day will come and say, I thank my God the best thing I ever did do was when I took off the old robe and put on the new. Yeah. When I really made up my mind, I'm going to live for God. I'll tell you, it's the best decision I ever made. And after 50 years, heaven's looking better all the time. All right. And God's looking greater. And oh, and thank God for this gospel that we have today. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. I preached my mother's funeral. Somebody said, how can you do that? Oh, I said, it's easy. If you believe what you're preaching. It's easy to hand somebody over the hands of the Lord. Here they are, Lord. You take care. He can do what I can do. And I have no doubt He will. And He did. See, it's not that hard. Amen. When you really believe. And you kind of come to believe. Faith has to live and grow in you. And it will. If you surrender. If you die. That's the mystery of the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
If he hadn't been willing to die, children, we couldn't be here today. No. Right. With the blessing of God in our life, we couldn't be. We wouldn't be here. And now all over the world, there's there's just a great multitude of people that has turned their life over to God and God has proved to them that they can be something they never thought they could be. I'm going to tell you, there's no limit to it. There's no end to it. But if we believe, you can only believe, he said, as a grain of mustard seed, the smallest seed known to man, to a little you can't even hardly see it, if you can believe that much, you can have whatever you ask for. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can ask what you will, he said, and it shall be done. Amen. Oh, I tell you, I can't hardly believe that. Well, then you can't have it. You've got to come to a place that you can believe that. Guess what? I believe it. I believe it. He made a believer out of me. I surrender. I give up. You got me, Lord. <laughs> I love him today. And I love you. I hope you got some little thing out of this today. Praise the Lord. Amen.